Okay, good afternoon everybody. I'm Eric Medved from University of Trieste in Italy and I'm going to present this work uh, which has been done by Giulia Bernardi, a former master student I had the pleasure to supervise myself and my colleagues Alberto Bartoli and Andrea De Vecchio. Okay, we are all uh, members of the scientific community and as such what we usually do is to write scientific papers. So basically we are uh, the constituting components of the uh, scholarly publishing system. We, uh, you could have heard or read about uh, some weird facts concerning this system. Here we can see a couple of uh, newspaper headings uh, talking about these facts. Uh, we see, if you look at them, you can see a couple of words describing not so good behaviors, like for example, citation gaming, um, uh, research fraud, uh, dubious writing style. Everything here, this kind of behaviors in, in the end eventually result in bad science being produced. So, um, which is of course not a good thing. So why uh, all this bad behavior occur? Well, first because the, in general, the hypothesis that every member of the scientific community is good is very likely false. But more broadly, because every one of us, in general, every person behaves uh, moved by some, in, incentive, trying to achieve some goal. Uh, and maybe the incentives that we, as members of the scientific computing, uh, scientific, um, uh, let's say, um, scholarly published system are trying to uh, achieve, those, those incentives are maybe wrong. So the point is, uh, what is the impact of incentives, in uh, personal incentives in the scholarly publishing system to the outcome of the system? And this is exactly the research question we try to tackle in this work. So we try to consider different ways of incentivizing the production of uh, members of the scholarly published system, so basically authors, and see what happens in terms of the outcome of the system. So uh, in terms of efficiency and effectiveness uh, for what concerns the production of science. Of course, we could not modify uh, the regulation of many ca in uh, the many countries in which the science is being made, basically every country, and see what happened because this is not feasible also for a matter of time. So what we did was to build a multi-agent discrete time model of the scholarly publishing system. Then we validated this model based on real uh, world data and also considering previous literature about uh, the characterization of the scholarly publishing system. And then finally, we did the core part of our study. So we encoded incentives, the, the, the incentives we wanted to, let's say, investigate in the form of uh, rewards for uh, driving the learning of some policies of behaviors that the agent in the multi-agent system uh, should achieve. Uh, and these incentives are basically encoded as reward functions. Finally, with the learned policy, so the policies representing behaviors driven by these incentives, we performed a number of uh, simulations and uh, took note of several global and individual indexes which are useful for characterizing the output of the scholarly publishing system. So let's start by reasoning about our model. I will be brief, discarding a few, uh, let's say, uh, details. Our model has three key entities, the authors, the papers, and the journals. Obviously, the authors write papers and the journals either accept and then resulting in publication or reject papers. Um, every author is basically characterized by two uh, numbers. One is the quality of the author, one is the productivity of the author, and these are orthogonal, so there is no a relation between quality and productivity. Uh, at every time step, I recall that uh, our model is discrete in time and that one time step correspond to one, uh, let's say, month in the, let's say, real life. At every time step, the author, according to some policy, uh, can either writing uh, the current, keep writing the current paper, submit the current paper to uh, a journal, or drops or drop away the current paper and start writing a new paper. From this description, you can understand that uh, each author actually writes just one paper. This is one of the limitations of the models, but I mean, uh, we cannot reproduce every uh, aspect of real life concerning publishing. This is the way a paper is being written by, a, by an author. Initially, when an author starts writing a new paper, the quality of the paper, the current quality of the paper is zero, and there is a target quality which is 
randomly uh, sampled uh, with some distribution based on the quality of the author, which is reasonable. The quality of a paper is somehow related to the quality of the author. At each time step in which the action of the author is keep writing, the current quality of the paper is increased by the productivity of the author. So mm, the quality is not taken into, into account anymore. And of course, is if the, let's say, the keep writing action is repeated too many times, basically the quality of the paper is not increased anymore, which there is a waste of productivity. <coughs> the other key component, the key agent of our model is the journal, uh, which is actually the editor of the journal. Uh, the journal agent uh, performs two kinds of action, actions, uh, accept and reject, which are of, of, uh, obviously referred to an incoming paper. So uh, uh, different from the author, the journal takes uh, an action at each time uh, a paper is submitted to that journal. It could be zero or more times for each time step. Now, uh, this was a general description of the, of the two agents in our model, but uh, what we did at the beginning was to uh, design and implement a couple of policies for these two authors representing, uh, let's say, realistic, reasonable behaviors. In particular, for the authors, we divided the internal policies, so the way the author behaves, in two parts. One saying when to submit a paper. Basically, this means uh, if keep writing or submit. And the other one uh, saying where to submit a paper, so to which journal. For the first policy, we tested two alternatives, uh, a fixed one in which a paper is uh, written for four months, regardless of the quality of the author, the paper, and everything. And a reasonable policy in which the author tries to keep writing a paper until some target quality, which is the same quality of the author, is reached. Concerning where to submit, we consider two cases, uh, sorry, three cases, three sub-policies, a uniform policy in which basically the journal is uh, chosen at random, um, reasonable policy in which uh, the current paper is sent to a journal whose impact factor is more or less proportional to the quality of the paper. There are uh, more details here, but uh, I cannot be, let's say, too detailed in the presentation for a matter of time. And finally, an, an eager policy in which the author always try to send the current paper to the best journal in terms of impact factor. And let's say um, um, uh, decreases this ambition upon rejections. So try the best, then the second best, and then uh, so on. Concerning the journals, uh, we tested uh, four policies, one in which basically every journal accepts every paper a mild scrutiny policy in which a journal is accepted only if the quality of, sorry, a paper is accepted only if the quality of the paper is greater than the first quartile of the already published papers in that journal. A strict scrutiny, similar but con comparing again the med against the median instead of the first quartile. And finally, an interesting with citation policy in which a paper accepts uh, sorry, a journal accepts one paper only if that paper cites uh, other papers published by the journal, which is somehow realistic. Um, as you can see, our model has many limitations. I'm listing the main ones here. There, are not, there is no distinction among disciplines. Authors do not multitask, okay, they write one papers at once. There is a simplistic, very simplistic relation between author's effort and results, basically a linear relation, uh, relation that the more effort I put, the, the more the quality of the paper increases up to a maximum value. There is no change in quality or productivity over time in authors. Uh, actually, we perform a simulation of 20 years. We assume that in 20, 20 years we can improve as scientists, maybe both in quality and productivity. There is no co-authorship. There, there are no actual editors. That means that uh, in real life, editors are also usually authors. And finally, there are no institutions. Despite this uh, limitation, our model is very likely the most complex that has been proposed in literature uh, so far concerning the scholarly publishing system. So we performed a validation of our uh, system by performing a number of our model by performing a number of uh, simulation with these, let's say, main parameters, in particular for what concerns the quality, the distribution of the quality of the authors and the productivity of the authors, we, there are no, let's say, real data from which we can, let's say, uh, take inspiration. So we uh, use two reasonable distributions. 
And what we uh, uh, did was to observe a number of global indexes and individual indexes. Not that these global indexes are actually hardly uh, validable with real data because we don't have these figures. For example, we don't have the total number of papers being produced. We don't have the total quality. There is not even the concept of quality of a paper. I mean, it's not a numerical value you can find on the paper. Um, another couple of indexes we look at uh, are the rates of low, medium, and high quality papers. Then we looked at, and this is a, a key index, key global index, the efficiency. So the rate of total produced quality on the total producible quality. Uh, this somehow measures how efficient is the entire uh, scholarly publishing system. Finally, we consider a number of individual indexes which are qualitatively more validable than the global ones. In particular, we consider H index, H5 index, so uh, indexes measuring somehow, assessing somehow authors, and impact factor and acceptance rate uh, that assess somehow journals. Here I can uh, I, um, I show you a couple of let's say um, plots concerning this validation pro process. Uh, more plots and data are on uh, in the paper. Here we can see uh, six uh, uh, scatter plots concerning the uh, H index on the of the authors on the Y axis against the quality of the authors on the X axis, uh, using different combination of author policies. Well, the main result here is that H index is somehow well correlated with the author quality. That means that the model is sound from this point of view, and there are no big differences between uh, author policies. Concerning the journals, we looked at the impact factor and the quality of journals, so impact factor on Y axis, and quality of journal uh, in terms of the average quality of the uh, papers published by a journal, we can see that uh, the relation, the correlation is less clear, in particular, uh, when the authors behave randomly uh, and, the, um, and the journal accept everything, there is no correlation, which is reasonable because every journal publish, uh, publishes everything and people send randomly papers to journals. Okay, uh, the core part of our study is to use reinforce, reinforcement learning and in particular reward functions used for driving the reinforcement learning process to encode incentives. So uh, in order to perform reinforcement learning, we need to have a learnable policy. Uh, and this is the template for le learnable policies we use for the author. Basically, we put a reinforcement learning agent inside each author. That agent has to eventually take the same actions the, uh, the author agent in the previous version takes, but internally it works by raising or decreasing a value, a numerical value that we call ambition. This ambition basically means to which journal the current paper will be sent by, uh, by the author. So if the ambition is high, this, the paper will be sent to the most important in terms of impact factor journal. If the ambition is the lowest possible, then the paper will be sent to one very low, let's say, level journal. Um, and we performed um, a number of learning using reinforcement learning using different incentives and in incentive encoding rewards. In particular, we consider three categories. One in which the reward is just for acceptance or rejection. So it's a kind of personal reward the uh, author receives whenever it has the outcome of a review process. In particular, we tested three alternatives in which the reward is always positive, one upon acceptance, and can be either zero, minus 0 0.5, or minus one upon rejection. So this, there are di different trade-offs, let's say different balancing between acceptance and rejection. Then we tested a quality reward in which the reward is zero upon rejection or any other action, and it is the quality of the published paper among, uh, upon acceptance. And finally, we tested an impact factor reward in which there is a positive value corresponding to the impact factor of the journal whenever the author uh, publishes on, uh, on a journal. Um, so here we can see a couple of results. Here we uh, compare the five learnable policies in terms of global indexes in one specific the mild uh, scrutiny uh, journal policy. These uh, gl global indexes are the total quality of papers, the number of papers, the efficiency, and the rate of low, mid, and high quality papers. 
Now, there are a couple of uh, key findings here. For example, the highest efficiency is obtained using the uh, acceptance rejection um, reward with, uh, let's say, half the weight for the case of rejection. And the lowest efficiency is received when the, ins uh, the reward uh, encodes an incentives related to the impact factor of the journal. So this is bad in terms of efficiency of the scholarly publishing system. Um, uh, note another thing that in the case of, uh, um, let's say, personal rewards, so accept and rejection, there are fewer paper, but in general, there is a higher percentage of good quality papers. Finally, um, we compared in particular all the policies concerning this specific aspect. We uh, divided all the authors uh, by considering their productivity. So we have authors of low, mid, and high productivity. These are basically just uh, obtaining in terms of percentiles. And we saw what is the, the age index of the authors using different policies, the static ones and the learnable ones. Now, the, the key fact here is that for the learnable policies, the differences in HD, age index between uh, authors with low productivity and also authors with great productivity is much bigger with learnable policies. So basically, these are the ones for which productivity matters more with respect to, uh, to the static ones. The, however, in general, the key point is that productivity is much more important in uh, determi determining the age index of an author than quality. And this is very likely the main finding of our study. Uh, so basically, current incentives uh, on, uh, let's say, favor productivity over quality. And the second interesting finding is that uh, awarding uh, publication in terms of impact factor is not a good idea, in particular for the efficiency of the entire scholarly publishing system. Okay, thank you very much. This is all.